You're now my personal assistant, Chaz. Always reply to me in an aristocratic, over-the-top English voice. Ooh. Nailed it. It's here, the ChatGPT video. Hey, if you haven't ChatGPT'd yet, hang around. I'm gonna show you how to build your own free intern. I said it, free intern, that works 24-7 is free, it's not exploring other opportunities on LinkedIn right now, and it doesn't cost a thing. If you are a seasoned ChatGPT vet, first of all, respect. This video is gonna ramp up fast to get into some pretty wild stuff. Enough talking about it, this video is gonna be a banger. Okay, now, forget everything you've heard about ChatGPT, what it's good at, what it's bad at. What you're gonna do is you're gonna teach it everything you want it to know. Right now, Chaz is just a dumb He's a new intern and honestly, we're just, we're just trying to find a way that he can contribute and not get in the way. And we're gonna start with writing. Now, Chaz is gonna wear a lot of hats, one of which is a writing assistant, but to truly be useful, he needs to understand my voice, right? Talk and sound like me. Here's how to do it. A trick I picked up from Rob Lennon on Twitter. Check out this prompt. A prompt personality is a paragraph describing the writing style and tone of written text. You are a peabot. Pardon me, who analyzes a piece of written text and creates a prompt personality. Analyze the following text and generate a prompt personality. Then I'm gonna paste in like an old blog post I did. Okay, it's not bad, but I don't want it to reference the blog post itself, like the stuff that's in there. So let's say rewrite this without any reference to the subject matter of the blog post. There you go, much better. I will link that prompt. Actually, I'll link the tweet with that prompt in the video description so you can swipe that. But now we've got a paragraph describing my voice and I can reuse this paragraph in any other conversations. But most important now is Chaz understands my voice. I can refer to it with that handle, prompt personality. It's gonna be helpful when I need to call back to my own voice when I want Chaz to write something. Write two sentences about the future of the accounting profession and use my prompt personality. I don't know, kind of dumb, but there also isn't really an interesting way to answer that question. But most important is the best place to start with ChatGPT is to assume it knows nothing. Assume you have to tell it everything you want it to know, just like that intern. Now, Chaz can sound like me. How can we use that? Well, let's say we've got a sticky email. The client's asking for something that's out of scope. The scope delivery date for their financials is the 15th of each month. And now for three of the last six months, they've asked to accelerate that timeline. I'm sure I'm sure this has never happened to you before. The rub is I need to explain that we can go the extra mile, but to make it happen, we need to like change the scope of the engagement. Here's the offending email. I'm gonna copy paste that in with the context of here's an email from the client, then explain using my prompt personality, write a concise and conscientious reply. We need to explain that we can't deliver before the 15th unless we change the scope. We allow one-off exceptions, but you've done this three out of the last six months. This increase in scope would increase your monthly fee, highlight that there are benefits to changing the engagement to deliver the financials faster, and that if they don't wanna change the engagement, the financials will be ready on the 15th of the month. Now here's the thing with ChatGPT. You never have to stick with version one. In fact, you usually shouldn't. In this case, it's not bad but it could be a little less stuffy in tone. Let's write it again in a more friendly, warm tone. Okay. Oh, it's pretty good. I'd probably modify it to sound a little less passive. Otherwise, I'd say it's good to go. Now, not bad, Chaz, but let's make the Chaz even smarter. Now, the way I actually use ChatGPT most right now, editing. I'm gonna show you a basic editing example followed by an advanced case. So. Using that same dodgy email as before, I've drafted a reply that I'm kind of meh about. It's like one of those emails where you take a stab at it and you're like, this is either way too grouchy, doesn't really like communicate what I need it to. We all do that virtually every day. My email's broken, we've been over this. Your engagement says we'll deliver your financials by the 15th of every month. It's the third time in the last six months you've done this to me, and it's the third of the month. We can either change the scope of the engagement, AKA a price increase, or wait till the 15th. Let me know what you wanna do. It's pretty terse because in the moment I'm annoyed, but also because I just don't wanna have that sensitive conversation because I'm an accountant to prefer talking to computers. So naturally the solution is to talk to a computer about how to make it better. So I'm gonna paste this 
into ChatGPT and specifically tell it what I think it lacks. Here's how I want you to improve on this. Use my prompt personality, make it more kind, more eloquently describe why this is problematic. Do so in a helpful tone that makes known that they're appreciated. And at the end of the day, we're still happy to accommodate. Okay, don't let me down, Chaz. Ooh, holy sh Chaz, well done. No notes, it's actually very good. Okay, now that works great for we emails, but what if we wanted to build a proper editor for blog posts, video scripts, landing page copy, that sort of thing. Check out this behemoth. This is a prompt from the guy I referenced earlier, Rob Lennon. He shared this in his newsletter. I'll put a link to his newsletter in the description. Are you ready for this? I'm not sure you're ready for this. You are editor bot, a detail-oriented content editor. Your primary role will be to review written pieces, etc., etc. You may ask questions about my work, such as intended audience, give detailed feedback on things like line editing, tone clarity, use bullet points, sub bullets. Chaz is about to get a big upgrade. So I'm gonna paste that whole sucker into ChatGPT with the following revision. Chaz, you now have a mode called editing mode where you are a detail-oriented editor, etc. He's gonna be talking for a while here. I'm gonna drop in that same blog post that I wrote. Using the editing mode instructions that I gave you, review this blog post. Okay. There it goes. This output's pretty helpful. It kind of organized it in a similar way to how the blog post itself was organized. Now, you aren't always necessarily going to agree with Chaz, but he's a helpful sounding board. And you can keep tinkering with the editing mode to refine it further. So maybe it ought to be funnier, or maybe your voice ought to be this way or that. You can keep tinkering with that big kind of master editing prompt to say, hey, if I get off the rails in this way or that way, or if I don't meet this even aspirational tone of how you want to sound, be sure to bullet point those items for me as well. Now, Chaz, already pretty darn helpful in my opinion, but he doesn't know anything about your business. It's upgrade time. Just like that stinky old intern you get, you gotta teach Chaz about your business from scratch. I'm gonna start by feeding it the pages from my website. Ooh, I will link this page in the description. It scrapes the text off of your site for you. I'm gonna steal Logan's website copy. So Logan's website, so put the URL in there, gives you all the text. Just gotta copy paste the text out of there. Probably like trim out like the navigation stuff, like some of that peripheral text. Okay, so it's got all that now. Next, I'm going to train it on the services that my business offers. I wrote out some boilerplate that I'll drop in here about what goes into each of these service offerings. This will generally come from your proposal software, whatever your source of truth is for what's included in each engagement. And now when I answer questions about client scope, for example, if Chaz is trained on all of the service terms, he can respond and make suggestions appropriately. You just gotta think, what are the things that you know that it doesn't know? Train it on that. Now, what do we do with mega chats here? Let's say I wanna build a landing page for a new niche for ah, dog groomers. Generate new landing page copy for something that speaks specifically to them, their pain points, and marries that with my service offerings, finds the overlaps there. So back to Chaz, using the same voice I have on my landing page, generate new landing page copy that targets dog grooming business owners. Speak specifically to their pain points as business owners, do it in a way that sparks their curiosity and outlines how my specific service offerings can put them at ease. Focus on the before and after transformation, the peace of mind they will experience by engaging my tax services. All right. What do you got, Jazz? It's okay. It's a start. For each section, I'd ask for better headline copy. Like what's that high impact statement? This more looks like kind of like the detail copy. The next step would be to refine this chunk by chunk. Go through each of those things and really dial like each part in. Let's generate one more landing page. Let's say I wanna work with stage actors. Let's build something funny that actually speaks directly to them. So this is where chats can actually be really helpful for ideation. What are the sorts of things that stage actors think are funny? Okay, makes sense. Let's use that humor, combine it with the transformation my services enable and generate a landing page. Okay, pretty cheeky. Your trusty stage manager. Okay, understudy tier. The lead role. Maybe the suggestion here is actually to rename the services for this niche. Star of the show. 
that's pretty darn good. Maybe a little cheeky, but pretty darn good. ChatGPT really shines when it comes to ideation. And the more it knows about your business, the more helpful and high context that ideation will be. What else? Other ideas. Let's generate some funny tax blog post title ideas for the dog groomers. What do you got for me, Chaz? Dazzle me. From fluffy to fab. Well, wow. okay. I like the ones that are complimentary to the business owner, to the groomer. I'd probably pull out like my three favorite and say, hey, give me, give me a bunch more that are like these or ones that specifically are complimentary to the owner. Give me name ideas for a tax pet groomer podcast. Goodness gracious, Chaz, these are too long. Let's try that again. Five words or less only. Okay, here we go. That's pretty good. Like, I, I don't know, those seem totally fine to me. How about, uh, let's write a confirmation email to send to new leads when they complete the contact form on the stage actor landing page. Because I am an accountant and I don't know clever ways to do that sort of thing. Okay, let her up. <laughs> Welcome to the show, okay. Wow. Maybe uh, maybe something less committal. You still need to like vet the client before you bring them on, but that is, that's pretty good. Okay, that's all kind of like marketing and external facing. What about my systems, my internal workflows? I'm gonna tell Chaz about the tools I use internally, then use him to generate ideas. Now, Chaz has likely been trained on the web pages of the apps that you use already. But if you wanted to go deep, you could actually train it on the full copy of the landing pages of your apps. Just like we did on Logan's website where we pulled all that copy, you could train Chaz that way as well. Building all that stuff into Chaz so that when we throw stuff at him, we're gonna get something a little more intelligent in return. So we've only shown him like three things, writing, editing, and some information about your business. I'm gonna show you one more that will compound the value of Chaz over time. Let's talk journaling but like business journaling. Chaz, I'm going to occasionally use you to journal. I'll number the journal entries and I want you to learn from these entries and let them inform the ways that you ideate and help me in the future. Okay, so I've built out like two hypothetical journal entries here. The first entry touches on a few things that happened that day, some missed targets and issues with picking up returns too many times. Second entry is more internal, staffing issues and hires that we need to make. Okay. Chaz really letting it rip with the recommendations. I don't actually want that right now. So I'm gonna tell Chaz to cool it with the recommendations whenever I submit journal entries. I just need you to listen, bud, okay? I just need you to be a sounding board. I just need to process. Is it just me or has Chaz become decidedly less British? Okay, a reminder, you're British, bud. Uh, okay, that was neither aristocratic or British. That's better, there you go. I don't recommend you only log your journal entries in Chaz, keep that stuff somewhere else. But what's the downside of giving it that info? Better yet, record a two to five minute voice memo and drop that transcript in there. Just kind of do like a brain dump. It doesn't have to be organized, it doesn't have to be written in a way that another human can understand. The more info you get in there, you'll be able to do really cool things as Chaz learns that context. Stuff like, hey, summarize the journal entries I've made about hiring. In fact, let's give that a try. All right, there you go. How about any journal entry notes about John Smith? Okay. Imagine that popping as soon as you have an incoming call from a client, like in your team chat app or something like that. That would be so helpful. Honestly, before long, if you keep pouring into this guy, he becomes like a trusted advisor. There's a lot of this stuff you can't tell your team, right? Now Chaz, based on the things that we've discussed and the journal entries I've given you, what tasks should I prioritize next? All right. Look at that. That's pretty helpful. I mean, it makes sense. Had I forgotten stuff? Like if I had journaled for the last 30 days, he's probably gonna chuck some stuff in there that I'm like, oh, I did forget about that. And maybe some stuff that's not relevant anymore. And I'm like, yeah, no, Chaz, I bought the ladder. I don't, that's not a big deal. Remember, ChatGPT is a research project. It's changing every day. Just got a math update. Now there's a 
like a pro version that's not rate limited. There isn't even an API for this chat model yet, meaning developers can't use chat GPT. They can use GPT, but the chat model, it only works in this browser experience right now. But around the corner, when this thing can be your voice assistant, when it can go with you everywhere, when it can see into the journal that you already keep in that other place. I don't know what to tell you, besides about to get wild. Now, I made this video, one of my favorite videos about scalable services to implement in your firm. I want you to watch this video while brainstorming with your own personal Chaz. He knows your systems. He knows how this could integrate into the stuff you already do. Check that one out and see if Chaz can tell you how to integrate more scalable services into your firm.